Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison, Senior Program Manager inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI, and I want to keep on keeping on talking about Boolean logic and other options like Switch that are available to us inside of JavaScript. So let's start off by talking a little bit about implicit conversions to Booleans inside of JavaScript. Now, this is something that a lot of programming languages do, including, say, like Python, where it will look at a variable, and if it's storing the default value for that data type, so an empty string in case of a string, a, a null value in case of an object, or zero in the case of a number, all of those will automatically test as false. And so this can be a really quick way for us to check to see whether or not a variable is storing a value. So with that logic there, it would not print out x contains a value because x is 0. Now, just like with our equality operator, we can also still use the exclamation point or bang to reverse that. So if I take that logic and I put a bang in front of the x, now what's going to happen is I'm looking to see whether or not this does not contain a value. Because it's going to convert that x into a boolean, so it would be false, and then it's going to reverse that into true. And so now in this case, it's looking to see whether uh, it's, it's looking to see that it contains no value, and that's what it's going to display. And just like I sort of tripped over my words there, it's a good reminder that when you're writing your code, you typically want to look for the positive rather than looking at the negative. Finally, strings in JavaScript when we're doing our comparison are going to be case sensitive. So in this particular case, where I've got my name equals Christopher, lowercase c, and then I'm going to do my comparison with a capital C, those two strings are not going to be equal. You could handle this by either converting them to all upper or all lowercase, or you could also take a look at something like locale compare which you can look inside of the supporting documentation for a little bit more information on that. Also, just like other programming languages, we could combine comparisons by using the AND operator, which is the ampersand, or the OR operator, which is the pipe. Now, keep in mind that with AND, both sides need to be true in order for that to evaluate as true. And with OR, only one side need be true in order for that to evaluate as true. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is the fact that we've got a single and a double of each one of those. You might be wondering, what's the difference? Well, the double is going to be known as a shortcut operator. And what that will do is it will actually skip the second side if it turns out that the first side gave it the answer. In the case of a, an ampersand, with a, which is our AND, what's going to happen is if the first value is false, it's going to skip evaluating the second. Why? Because if that first one is false, the entire thing is guaranteed to be false. They have to both be true in order for it to be true. If one's false, we've already failed it. And the same is going to hold true with our OR statement. Of course, the difference is the fact that if the first one is true, now we know it's going to test as true, and so it will wind up skipping that one. As a general rule, you want to use that amper and pipe pretty much always, because it's always going to be what you want. I've only run into a couple of cases where what I wanted was the single one. Now, if we take a look at how we can combine these, you're going to notice on our else if that I've got my or. So if the status is 400 or 500, then we're going to print out error. Now, you might be looking at that 
and you might be going, wow, there could be a lot of different values here that I want to go in and test for and do different things on, and I could wind up with a really long statement here. Well, this is where switch, or as some people like to call it, a case statement, or maybe even just switch case, comes into play. That with a switch statement, what we'll do up at the very top is indicate this is the value that we're going to test. So we're going to test our status. And we're going to look to check for all the possible cases, all the possible values. So could it be 200? Could it be 400? Could it be 500? Now, the couple of things that I want you to notice here. Number one is the fact that it's always going to check for a quality. So I'm not able to do less than or greater than here. Now, fortunately, one thing that I can do is stack one after the other. So that second block that you're seeing there of that case 400, case 500, that's basically like an or. So if it's 400, it would run the code. And if it's 500, it would run the code. Now, one big thing to keep in mind about writing switch statements is that that break statement is required. If you don't have that break statement, what's going to happen is it will perform what's known as a silent fall through, meaning that it will keep running all of the logic that it sees. So without that break statement, what would wind up being printed out on the screen would be OK, error. And if we didn't have that second break statement, it would even print out unknown value, silent fall throughs typically not what you're going to be looking for when you are writing your switch statements. Let's get in and take a look at the syntax here and hopefully bring all of this together for you so you can see how our Boolean operators, our, our various bits of logic work inside of JavaScript.